Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a 5th edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world. Uh, this being Friday, it's Kyber Shards Answers episode, so we're going to take some viewer questions, and we are joined, as you can see, insistently by Eric, who's gone slowly mad over the last <laughs> few seconds. Yes. Uh, if you would like to submit questions for Kyber Shards Answers in the future, you can do so in comments on any of our videos or over on our Discord, the link to which you can find down in the description with all of our other social media and link to our merch store and all of the various things. Of course, while you are down there, we certainly appreciate any buttons you might choose to push. Um, unless you're subscribed, then don't push the like unsubscribe. <laughs> that one, that you one's hit that bad. twice, then you've, yeah, you, you ideally <laughs> something like this or a little like sharing arrow like that submit comments yeah, yeah comments yeah these are all good but all feed our mighty <laughs> overlord and i guess you patron. have to hit a bunch of other keys before you hit comment to write a that's, comment I don't that's know. true yeah. <laughs> just a period though if you just hit that and then submit comment it like it'll it do counts. something i don't know. something <laughs> anyway, all hail algorithm yeah uh, anyway so we are going to jump into some questions we were getting ready for a job this was a little bit of a transitional episode <laughs> Uh, yes. But there are some questions to catch up because it's been a few weeks since we've talked about Ari. Uh, so first off from Laura, after the interaction with Carl, is Ari rethinking his approach to the memory thing? <laughs> I went through all the questions and then you said, Laura, I was like, Laura asked a question. But yeah, I remember reading this. Um, it And I, the Carva conversation was the first instance where both Ari and I, as Eric, the player, kind of examined Ari's just knee-jerk, like, oh, I've had interactions with you before, so I'm going to restore those things, even though they cause physical pain to you. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm sure there will be an instance where Ari will make the decision to not reconnect with somebody in that way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from a personal view, I mean even if it was only a handful of interactions, that's still like, I don't know. It, it like it, Ari's fear was to be forgotten. And yeah. so right now he's just very much in a undo all the damage kind of thing. Like, Oh, we said hi once. Hold on. I have a poem to sell you. Right. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's just, he's still very much in the infancy, infancy of that. Like, no, of course I have to restore everyone's memory of me. Um, because that was my worst nightmare and it came true. So now I have to undo it. So, yeah. uh, no, I'm sure down the road, there will be like a legitimate, like examination and point of either it's not worth it or a very deliberate, like, I don't want this person to remember significant like interactions I've had with them. Speaking of that, we actually got a question on that from Spartacus. Is there anyone you, you, it says, or Ari, but I presume primarily Ari do not want to <laughs> recite the poem for. Is there anyone Ari um, would, would choose to hide from using the the curse? So my my knee jerk reaction is Falco. Yeah. But also Ari has a has kind of a vengeance bent on Falco, and Ari would hate for that to not be for to known. Not sink in. Like, yeah. <laughs> like for Falco to just be confused as to why <laughs> this this person's murdering him. Um so uh yeah, th there are there's one person in particular that I, as Eric the player, um, have a pretty strong sense that Ari would make the choice to not have them remember him. But I don't know if they're going to show up in the campaign, and so I don't want to spoil anything. So, and this is not something Philip and I have discussed either. It's just kind of a, in the back of my head, I gave Philip a, a thing, and I'm waiting to see if he's going to play with it. So, Very yeah. interesting. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone and players, that's how you know that there's going to be a conversation after this, <laughs> this <laughs> recording ends. <laughs> uh, indeed. Um, Laura would also like to know, you were going to attack a boat, so what happens if somebody gets dunked in the water and their paper mask becomes a soggy face mess? Uh, then we have a growth moment where we realize that paper mache is a bad mask material for, like, <laughs> in the field adventuring is also fire i was thinking uh, about that ice like <laughs> i was messing with the, literally any element i was messing around with that episode and i was i was thinking yeah there's got to be a better material you got to imagine like that's a that if we were really like 
obviously we we don't play gritty or anything like that. But if we were really going to play gritty realism in D and D, the thing is not that people would have to worry about is not like starvation and that kind of thing. The thing would be the material your clothes are made of, considering yeah. the number of times that fire washes over you in the course of an average dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Just living with Pog. I mean, it's just constant. Right. <laughs> like, we just um, need extremely, extremely common fire retardant uh, clothing. Yeah. No, the paper mache masks, masks are Spider-Man in the hoodie. And I, I feel like we'll have the the proper spandex moment where like there's actual masks. Yeah. But right now we're just, you know, figuring things out. We need out. that moment in, um, uh, far from home in, in the plane where he's iron manning yeah. his, his new suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or just have Merrick's to Candace show up and be like, Hey, I've seen your work. <laughs> like give it and gift us, uh, suits. Right. So, and now come to a foreign country and fight a battle for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's remarkable what nice transitions we're having because emily would like to know if ari could have had a little more input into his mask design while still being in the theme with the other masks what would he rather have had instead of just a question mark i mean literally anything else uh no i'm i don't know because uh yeah like philip mentioned like we got to pick our own theme like i i was the one that dunked on ari not philip or the children um because nobody hates ari more than me <laughs> and, um uh th that was something the reason i went with that was a it was actually colin's idea colin dunked on ari and i just took the ball and ran with it <laughs> um because i was having a legitimately hard time because he doesn't have as easy of a a thematic element yeah. like Esri has kind of the moss fungus spore thing uh shade writes itself like shade shade is just i mean um uh, a gift when it comes to stuff like that and then obviously pog has his crusher uh backstory and ari doesn't really have anything like that that i i could at least think of um so i'm sure ari would have like wanted a wicked cool animal of some kind yeah uh but I, I probably would have, without, like, the curse, I probably would have gone into, like, Korvar lore yeah. and come up with something mm -hmm. based on that. Um, but I didn't need to, so I didn't. <laughs> so, which it's is the story a, of my D&D &D career. It's just, a, it's just <laughs> like, puzzle dust curled over your head with his butterfly wings yes. as your mask. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Just fade it out. Make it fade. Make, make it fade. Make it fade. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah. Um, Emily would also like to know, was your annoyance with Occam's scimitar more out of character and pointed at Philip for making the reference or in character frustration that even Thora is accusing them of jumping to wild conclusions? I just want to provide a blanket statement. Anytime Ari or Eric seems annoyed with one notable exception, it's always like in canon, yeah. except for Colin. I hate Colin. I can't stand him, but <laughs> everyone else, um, no, it's. Um, it was definitely Ari's frustration of like, listen, all I'm saying is that they tried to get the spear and I think somebody's going to come and try to get the spear and everyone's acting like I'm a crazy person for that. And I don't know why. And so, <laughs> um, and so that, that was Ari's tipping point with the whole, uh, and yes, there was a little bit of like Philip doing a very good job of using a real world analogy that. Because it's just like in all the medical shows when a haughty older doctor goes, well, Occam's razor says. <laughs> it's just that Philip was able to pull and like have House MD layered on top of his Thora reference and Ari just want to flip the desk <laughs> over. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Spartacus would like a refresher on what does Ari look like these days with his racial change and his mark and his Orlando hand-me-downs. Uh, his new armor, <laughs> hairdo, weapon, that sort of thing. What's what's your uh, your imagination of the, of the look for Ari to, uh, these days? Yeah. Uh, Ari's hair has continued to get longer just to cover up his mark. He's still trying his best to conceal that. Um, beard is still being manicured and trimmed, though. Uh, eyes are smoky gray, grayish black, but with feline uh, pupils, um, slits. Um, 
his armor we didn't really get into the the That's design true. of the armor a whole lot um we need to uh or I, I guess i need to figure that out um but i mean it was designed by hular it was designed by by his shop so it would be in line with with his aesthetic um the orlando hand-me-downs yeah i it's Ari looks like uh, an Eddie Bauer uh, LL Bean model. Like he's just in in the rugged outdoor stuff, but clearly has no business being in a canoe. Um, <laughs> he's just sitting there holding the oar in a very pleasant pose. Um, I'm imagining, so, um, yeah, this is an absurdly dated reference, but I'm imagining Orlando having a side gig writing the little testimonials for the catalog. Um, like in uh, in Seinfeld, yeah. uh, when when Elaine is working for the, for yeah. the fake Eddie Bauer, uh, mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm imagining. Uh, Orlando's side yes. gig was in his adventuring is to is to write. As I stalked through the jungle, I was extraordinarily glad for my Eddie Bauer multi pocket <laughs> jungle vest or whatever. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ari Ari dresses like a wayfinder but clearly has no business being a wayfinder and the, the aesthetic does not fit mm -hmm. at all, even though the clothes fit. And they do. Yes. So, <laughs> um, and the web, the yeah, weapon, yeah. the weapon solidifies it to looks like metal, but as it forms, it's kind of that same smoky gray that Ari's eyes are. And a lot of Ari's powers are, I haven't done a good job of describing darkness, but it's not pitch black. It is that kind of the forgotten prince esque smoky gray, uh, mist that emerges and things like that. So uh, I yeah. have a question: What made you pick a falcata when you decided what the sword looked like? That's a, a fairly obscure pull. What what made you go bronze? Yeah, age with it? I, <laughs> um, I I spent a fair amount of time looking at different weaponry, and I wanted to go uh, something that was aesthetically. I I wanted to get away from like traditional Western medieval weaponry um, without going too far afield and i came across the falcata and the the manner in which you attack with it it being double bladed up to a point and kind of the weighted mm -hmm. head it just was a very interesting weapon it's a cool weapon i dig it and also they had one in hero forge but that that honestly had played no part in it i was very pleased when i saw a falcata and i was like yes i did it <laughs> um <laughs> um but yeah it was it was just a weapon that the more I read about, the cooler it seemed, and it was purely an Eric choice. It had, Ari had no 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 part in this decision. I was like, "What's a cool yeah. weapon?" So cool. yeah, I agree. Falcados are very cool. Uh, and uh, Spartacus also asks, "Finally, any Eberron lore ideas for things Ari might be asked to acquire?" And he hid in spoilers. Might I recommend a certain phylactery? Um. Uh, I, I have one thing to say about this. I want to make it very clear. Yeah. So if you're not a deep Eberron lore nerd, you didn't get that, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you are, you probably know what he's talking about. I will say that I, as a GM, do not create situations that might cause player versus player if I can avoid it. And I yeah. feel like that's one that's, that would, um, that would that's be fair. A... That would be treading real hard yeah. on a different on a different character's story in a lot of ways. So I would probably not do that, but yes, that would be cruelly hilarious. So well done. The, the one that I immediately thought of when I read this question, and it's purely, uh, those of you that listen to Eberron renewed will know that I, Philip and I play certain characters within the Eberron lore differently. And I have a very distinct way that I play mm. King Borino. <laughs> And I don't know, uh, it's been a while since Philip has played Borinel for me, so I don't know where Philip currently lands on Borinel, but I play Borinel as very much disliking yeah. the crown. He wishes, wishes he could be an adventurer, he wishes he could be in giant ruins, doing all that kind of stuff. So Borinel's crown would be one that I feel like the Forgotten Prince he doesn't, would absolutely... Yeah, okay. yeah, that's good. Like, he doesn't appreciate it, he forgets about his duty, so, that's, yeah. Uh, that's good. Um, so, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of... You know, I mean, there's all sorts of, like, old artifacts that would be interesting adventures, but not yeah. necessarily... I imagine the Forgotten Prince, it kind of has to be sort of cheeky. Um, it, I mean, it probably yeah. doesn't, but the way that we've created the Forgotten Prince between us, it's got to be kind of cheeky. Um, but I can totally imagine just 
the rig like some portion of the of the regalia of old Galifar or something like that that everyone's that everyone's constantly searching yeah. around for. Um just just one part of it though, so that one could theoretically find all but one pieces of the set, but never be able to complete yeah. the set. So that would that would increase the prank it, yeah. element of it uh, mm-hmm. in a fun way. So yes. Um no, the phylactery would be very funny, but uh, and and a phylactery would be very funny. Although it's interesting, because a phylactery contains a lich's soul, is the phylact does the phylactery qualify as merely an object, or, or is it a, is it a living... part of a living being? That's... I guess. I guess. Yeah. I mean, the question would like something like like the soul sword. Yeah. Uh, would that be considered because it has the capacity to yeah so yeah that's an, yeah that's interesting that's an interesting weird little loophole in this world we've created which is great for fey things so yeah yeah weird, weird yeah, loopholes yeah. are great for fey things <laughs> um uh, i just had an idea but i haven't entirely me. rejected it yet so i can't say it sorry everyone yeah <laughs> um and mia eric i apologize if you talked about this before but i'm curious how did you get into D D? Um, well, listen to Philip's story, and I was there by his side the whole <laughs> way. Yeah, I mean, Philip and I got into D&D simultaneously. Um, I think that I was, I was kind of resistant mm, to it. You talked me into it. First. Did, yeah, oh, you really? And, okay, you and okay. Brad talked me into it, because for me it was a, no, that's, that's just one it's, too far. That's just, um, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know which of us but it was. But then but then LARPing got big and that created a buffer <laughs> right, of yeah. like, oh, now there's, there's a step further level. than D&D. So we're saying, um, um, sorry to any LARPers. I, yeah, I like, I, fun, I just... there is a, there is an age at which that would have been the ultimate fun thing for me. And I regret that it wasn't big when yeah. I had the time and inclination towards that sort of thing. So, but yes. No, I will say that my, like, I, I was interested in playing it. I had no capacity for understanding what D and D actually was. I feel so bad for our friend Brad, who was our first dungeon master, because Philip and I were absolutely playing it like a video game. Yeah. Like I wouldn't talk to every person in a tavern, convinced that somebody was going to know. I created a warforge that didn't have a memory of his past, and was like, "I'm going to go ask everybody about my, if they know anything about my past." And um yeah it was just it was a nightmare and i remember vividly having a conversation with brad and his wife regina about enjoying D D, but like i don't think i'll ever do like voices or anything <laughs> like and obviously look at me now um so i i will say that i like the idea of the game and wizards did a phenomenal job of marketing D yes, fourth did. edition and it seemed like a very fun thing made a lot of promises that didn't end up coming true because i remember like the digital character mm-hmm. creator and the virtual tabletop were like oh this is gonna be so cool because we were all into mmos and it seemed like an mmo but harder <laughs> and Perfect. so um yeah um but then uh philip and i obviously took over um co-dming our own campaign and then really just the it became a self-sustaining machine at that point of just getting deeper and deeper into the nerddom. Um, and then, yeah. And then I decided I wanted to try recording it and putting it on the internet for people to listen to and uh, never made a bigger mistake in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kid. I kid. Um, I agreed. I... No, because that's a great way to ensure that a campaign has longevity is if you're doing it as a product, then you have yeah, to, everybody has finish. to show up. But yeah, that's basically how I got into D&D was I apparently forced twist Philip's arm until he agreed to do it with me. And then we just went, kept going. So it feels it feels like the sort of thing that our friend, I mean, nobody here or most of our viewers don't know Brad. So this is it feels like Brad is probably the instigator. Yeah, it seems like the sort of thing he would have been. And I was somebody got a hold of a of a player's handbook. And then we drove to a game store and I went along reluctantly having not agreed to play and then reading the player's handbook introduced me to the Raven queen. And that was the end. And yeah, Philip, Philip has been in love ever since. So, and I was, um... I, yeah, that, that was in <laughs> that and miniatures. And I was, uh, I was down to do this. Yep. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, we have one more question from Emily. 
Uh, while I would be surprised if she has a favorite class or a teacher, are there any classes that Kara actually enjoys and or puts effort into? Or does she view all of them as, if I show up and do the bare minimum, it's a meal ticket and a roof over my head? So, uh, certainly when she first got there, um, I have to remind myself that it's been, we, we've, we've had a bit of a time jump. And so Kara has been yeah. pretty well um, established in the school at this point. When she initially got there, I mean, she le legit might sleep in class, you know. She was literally there because somebody said, if you come, you get food and a bed, uh, which were the two things missing in her life. <laughs> so um, except for apples, she could always steal an apple. Um, Got to figure out what's significant about that um, <laughs> from a character standpoint. Right. Um, but uh, I, I think that her friendship with Nasaria has begun to have, some would say, a positive impact because just, you know, she gets along with Pip and Mo and Donabella, um, but they're all very high energy. And Nasari is too, but there's just like it 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 can work. Like, whereas Donabella mm -hmm. constantly wants to go on adventures and wants to like go, 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 go. Um, I feel like Pip is just always at eleven. Mo is like loves Pog and like the the strike force and all and like Car is not sold on the strike force. I think that's the biggest thing is like saying she doesn't have a favorite teacher is probably the fairest statement uh, because they, she doesn't trust any of them entirely. She trusts Thora because Thora like is keeping good on her promises. Um, but in terms of actual effort in class, um, you know, if she's going to pair with somebody, if there's a group project, she's going to pick Nasaria and right. she's not going, she's, she has too much uh, empathy uh, for with Nasaria to f allow her to do all the work on her own, so she she will begrudgingly be like, okay, fine. Um, but so it's it's starting to tip, but I think still her default is like I am just here for room and board, and that's it. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all so much for the questions. That's all we've got for this week, uh, and. Um... New episodes will drop every month, or of uh, Kyber Shards drop every Monday. This Monday, we'll see the the culmination of the the prep for the battle and see how Tailspire works for us. The big old map. Um, and uh, new episodes of Kyber Shards answers every Friday. And until next time, thanks for rolling with us.